As most of you guys know, we actually broadcast this show live over the internet at 11 a.m. Los Angeles time. And so we've got a bunch of people in the chat board right now firing in some questions. So we're going to take a couple minutes and take some of the questions from the chat board. So Chris Lee is over there monitoring. Chris Lee, what do you have picked out? I have a couple picked out. And don't cut, copy, and paste, guys, because then I definitely won't pick your question. <laughs> um, Eric Clay has some friends protesting the Ender's Game film because of the author's personal opinions. Now, the author's a producer for the film, so he was wondering, does he get a percentage of the money from the box office? And I want to take his question a step further. Do you think that the author's personal opinions will affect Ender's Games at the box office? Um, you know, we actually talked about this on the show a few days, uh, maybe a week or two ago, about the you know the the political position of the guy, the original writer, who is listed as one of the producers uh, on, on Ender's Game and his position. In the, and I'm not going to go into the to the uh, subject here because it's not relevant. But I'll just say his position on it that is so controversial is that he's against gay marriage. Um, will it affect the box office? On a very small scale, I think it will. I don't think it will on, on a bigger scale. I think the bigger thing that might affect the box office is that the trailers haven't been very good. I think that's probably going to have more of an effect on it. But for those who would say, uh, I don't want to go see this movie now because a guy who wrote the original book and is now acting as a producer on it believes something that I don't believe and therefore I'm going to avoid. Look, the reality is this. There are a thousand different people involved with any single movie project. And if you really want to go through with a fine tooth comb, every single person involved there from the various studio executives to the 15 different producers, to all of the actors, to the, to the, you know, to the director, to the writers, to the what, if you really want to go through with a fine tooth comb, you're going to find some pretty disgusting crap <laughs> uh, at some point. And you are simply just not going to go see any movie. Like we talked about on the show yesterday that I, I try to separate my feelings about performers, what they're like off screen versus the performance they big bring to the screen. Right. Now, I will have exceptions, guys who beat women, people who murder, but those are really extreme examples. Um, generally speaking, I think if you live your life that I'm only going to buy jeans from a company where every single person who, you know, in that company that makes jeans agrees with everything I believe, then you're going to be naked all day. If you only go to movies where there's nothing <laughs> objectionable about people who live and work in Hollywood, mm -hmm. then you're never going to watch a TV show, you're never going to watch a movie. I, you may feel differently about that, and that's totally cool. I totally respect whatever opinions or views you have, but that's just the way I personally approach it. Schnepp, how do you see it? I was going to use Mel Gibson as a good example. Mm. Like, while his personal life and you know his his uh, things that he's done over the last few years really upset me, and I think he's kind of a jerk. Though I've never hung out and met with met him and you know, had beers with him, and it, so I don't know him personally. The things I've read about what he's done and said, I think, are gross. But I love Apocalypto. That's one of my yeah. all-time favorite films. It's in my top 100 easily. It's an incredible film. And he made it. It was his desire to make this film and see it all the way through. It's an incredible film. If you guys have never seen it, it's a journey. That's an amazing journey. And when it comes to like actors or, or directors or whoever, and they have a specific uh, you know viewpoint in the real world, someone like Orson Scott Card, I I, I can uh, commend someone like DC Comics. He had written a, a Superman comic. All this controversy over gay marriage came out, and DC said, you know what? We're not gonna pr we're not gonna print your comic book. Because Superman stands for what America stands for. So, if you're gonna, you know, take away, you're gonna pick on a certain group of people for, you know, their color or their race or their religion or what they believe in, get out of here. So, with science fiction film like, uh, you know, Ender's Game, it's way in the future. We, you know, I, his personal views, I don't know. I mean, like you were saying, like the trailer itself looks too much like the Last Starfighter, and they, you know. I'm not, the trailers themselves have not got me interested in seeing Ender's Game. I will eventually see it. Um, I just don't want to support Orson Scott Card. I just think the guy's a goofball. So, you know, that definitely, for me personally, affects me like I probably won't see it until it's on cable, just because it's him. All right, Aaron? I'm not excited for this movie either. Um, the trailers don't really interest me. I love Harrison Ford, and I will eventually see it, just like you, Schnepp. 
However, I really don't think that we can count on the, um, the writer's influence being too permeated into the script and what we're going to see ultimately. So I think it just comes down to who you want to support, what kind of movies you want to see get made, right. and the kind of content that you want to keep seeing because that's where the viewers have power. So. And I think there is a difference between, um, like for instance, content in a movie versus you know something that one of the people involved with the movie mm -hmm. happens to think or believe. Like I believe mm -hmm. in equal rights for women, and I may not be you know so interested in going to watch a movie about how women should stay in the home. You know I, I may not be interested in that movie, but if I find out that you know the third executive producer on the film uh, has some you know really backwards thinking beliefs about women should never have jobs in the real world. It's not going to affect me from right. going to see the movie. It's about if it's about something totally different. So I think there is a, there are two different worlds there. For sure, I agree. I mean, I, I think it's really gotten it's it, this particular film is is blowing it into a certain thing where it's like it might not affect you if like oh the executive producer of this was like that and they did, hey, hey, hey it's simply because it's the guy who wrote it. Right. So the whole reason that this film exists is because of this guy and this guy himself personally is making a big stink about like trying to rouse all these you know making going to congress and having you know i mean i i think his viewpoint he's trying to push his viewpoint and almost kind of attach it to Ender's game. So I'm sure the studio's not happy with it, so. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Chris Hartley writes, would we ever see a Flash Gordon remake? The VXF, VFX are better now, and I personally love the movie as is. What are your thoughts? Onward, my brave Hawkman, keep rocking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I think as, as a recognizable, identifiable, marketable sci-fi brand, I think it only makes sense that at some point we're going to see a Flash. I, I actually know for a fact that in the past 10 years, there have been two separate attempts to get a Flash Gordon remake off the ground, and they kind of sputtered and failed, but lots of projects sputter and fail in the, in the uh, pre-production and development phase. I think it's inevitable. Now, I don't think there's any plans for one right now. I don't think we're going to see one between now and maybe 2018, but I think shortly after that, there's just such a desire and a hunger for good, good sci-fi. There's such a hunger and desire from the studio's point of view to have a recognizable brand name that works. It's inevitable. We will see a Flash Gordon at some point. Maybe the one we saw in Ted. Maybe that would be an idea. <laughs> Schnepp, what do you think? Uh, the, the Sam Jones Flash Gordon is one of my all-time favorite fantasy science fiction films. I love that Flash Gordon. I love the Hawkman. Brian Blessed. I love the entire cast. I saw the movie when I was a little kid. I've seen it probably like 50 times, easily. Uh, it's an incredibly fun, campy, dorky film. Max von Sydow as Ming the Merciless. Nothing gets better than that. Queen's soundtrack is incredible. <laughs> it is the most incredible soundtrack ever made. So that being said, I'd love to see a new version of, of Flash Gordon. I mean, Sci-Fi Channel tried doing a series called Flash Gordon. I don't know if you saw it. It was horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> So, I mean, just because, you, you know, hey, we rebooted this, it could suck or it could be amazing. So, I think, you know, George Lucas used Flash Gordon as a, as a reason to make Star Wars. Right. So, Flash Gordon exists, be, and, and I'd love to see a revamp and a remake. I'd love to see it, you know, in the next few years. I think it'd be great. Aaron? I love this movie, too. I feel like parts of it I almost love for the wrong reasons because it is so campy and culty. No, those are the reasons you should love it. <laughs> But that's also part of the reason why I think that we're due for a remake, and I think it could be a different type of movie now, and a movie that a lot of people would support. I know for sure I'd support it. So yeah, I'd love to see this movie be rebooted. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to AMC Movie News on YouTube. It's free and a great way to stay updated with all the latest movie news and check out our daily show, AMC Movie Talk. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter to stay in the loop for our special prizes, giveaways, and contests.